Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Pratikriya na ye ye ya pratikriya na yas ye ha Uttas chit prahichit prabho Esa Bhagavan Kalam Sarvishamna Samagataha. Translation The frightful situation cannot be remedied by any person in this material world. My Lord, it is the Supreme Personality of God at its eternal time, Kala, that has approached us all. Report. So this is a continuation of Vidura's instructions in the palace to King Yudhisthira, but many of the palace members, including, I mean, not Yudhisthira, but Dhritarashtra. And King Yudhisthira, many of the members of the palace family members are all there listening to these instructions. Vidura. There is no superior power which can check the cruel hands of death. No one wants to die, however acute the source of bodily suffering may be. Even in days of so-called scientific advancement of knowledge, there is no remedial measure either for old age or for death. Old age is the notice of the arrival of death served by cruel time. And no one can refuse to accept either Summon calls or the supreme judgment of eternal time. This is explained before Dhritarashtra because he might ask Vidura to find some remedial measure for the imminent, imminent fearful situation as he has ordered many times before. Before ordering, however, Vidura informed Dhritarashtra that there was no remedial measure by anyone from any source in this material world. And because there is no such thing in the material world, death is identical with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as it is said by the Lord himself in the Bhagavad Gita and 34. Death cannot be checked by anyone or, any, or from any source within the material world. Rani Kashipu wanted to be immortal and underwent a severe type of penance by which the whole universe trembled. When Brahma himself approached him to dissuade Haranikasipu from such a severe type of penance. Haranikasipu asked Brahma to award him the blessings of immortality. But Brahma said that he himself was subject to death, even in the topmost planet. So how could he award him the benediction of immortality? So there is death even in the topmost planet of this universe. And what to speak of other planets? which are far, far inferior in quality to Brahma Loka, residing planet of Brahma. Wherever there is the influence of eternal time, there is this set of tribulations, namely birth, death, old age, and disease, and all of them are invincible. <laughs> Vaishnavayanamahonam Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakti Vindu Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Before I begin the class, just uh, Vrindavan Nath, if you can remind me at the end that I have an announcement to make to the devotees. Sure, Maharaj. Okay, so 
The material world, how Brahmana, Bhuvana, Loka, Purna, Vritta, Arjuna, Mamupeta, Purna, Janma, Naiti, Mamiti, Purna, Dvana. And from the highest planet to the, in the material world to the lowest, all are places of death, all are places of misery by which um, um, birth and death take place. So as long as one has a, a material body, one had, must be subjected to these four miseries, birth, disease, old age, and death. Some people avoid old age by dying young. That's not a solution. So all of these are, as it says here, invincible. We might add another word, they're insurmountable. So um, therefore, one who is actually intelligent would like to get out of this cycle of misery. Therefore, one has to take the Krishna. This is what is being explained here. Vidura is the compassionate younger brother of his older brother, Dhritarashtra, who now, after losing everything, he lost his sons, he lost uh, everything. He lost his family members. And now he's simply living at the expense of the Pandavas who he tried to kill. The story is that when Pandu, the older brother of Dhritarashtra, was meant to inherit the throne of the world, um, he died untimely due to a curse that was inflicted upon him. And because of the curse, it caused him to die. And now Dhritarashtra was the next in line, but because he was blind, he could not take the throne, but he was avaricious. Although uh, his other, his older brother Pandu had so many sons, they were the five Pandavas. Um, he didn't want any of them to take the throne. He wanted his sons to take the throne. And so he arranged this intrigue to make sure that his sons, who were quite avaricious, headed by Dushashana and Duryodhana, to um, get the throne, especially Duryodhana, who was the older. And uh, so he plotted in so many ways to kill the Pandavas, to remove them from making any attempt to get the throne, because Yudhisthira was the eldest son of Pandu, and he was the rightful heir to the throne because of Dhritarashtra not qualified to rule because of his, his material imperities. And so he did everything. He arranged for a house to be built. And that house was a house of Chalak, or Lak, they call it which is very flammable. So he sent nice notices that we have built a nice house for the Pandavas to live in. So please take this opportunity. So Vidura knew what was going on. And he also told the Pandavas, you should go there, but don't worry, there's an intrigue to remove you. Everything will work out for your favor, don't worry. And so they went. And then, of course, when Vidura informed them that they should dig a tunnel underneath the ground, and they did. And so when the house was set on fire after some time, they escaped through that tunnel. And Vidura was thinking, oh, the Pandavas are killed, that's so bad. And so they held a funeral rite for the Pandavas. And uh, he presided over the funeral rite. But he was the one that planned for them to be killed. But by Krishna's arrangement, using Vidura, they were saved and they had escaped. And now he's going ahead with this. Now, when the Pandavas were just children, they had no one to take care of them. So Vidura 
now along with Bhishma Dev, took care of the Pandavas as sons, and they raised him very nicely. But now, when his personal interests became interfered with, he wanted his own sons. And he knew the Pandavas were not only qualified, but they were the righteous heir to the throne, particularly Yudhisthira. He, uh, he turned against them. Now, this is the nature of envy. This is the nature of personal interest that one can, will act against even your friend, your family member, even your spiritual master. There are people who turn against their spiritual master because their spiritual master doesn't go along with their programs or they don't like what their spiritual master instructs them. And so uh, sometimes they turn against their own spiritual master. And uh, there are devotees who are not only turn against their spiritual master, they make propaganda publicly against their own spiritual masters. And this is even going on today in our Islam movement. So we see that there's not even regard for the spiritual master who is in good standing. Still, people have their own interests, their own material desires, and these desires become a cause of them to turn it right gay against their own well-wishers, spiritual masters, parents, friends, well-wishers, and others. And we see that. Now, even though Dhritarashtra lost everything, still the Pandavas didn't reject him. They also knew that he was against them. But they still didn't reject him. So even in his old age, they gave him a place in the palace and they respected him as an elder. But Bidura could understand that he was living like a household dog, simply on the remnants of Bhima, who he tried to kill. It was very pitiable and embarrassing situation for anyone to live at the expense of your enemy after you tried to kill that same person. And so, and he's getting old, his teeth are falling out, his hair is already fully gray, he can't walk properly, he's blind. And uh, Obidoro wants, he's a well-wisher of his elder brother, so he comes back and now he's giving him the message. In the previous verse, he said death is approaching and it will come very soon. So. You should know that you're that you should take heed, leave this air, go to the forest, perform penances and austerities, and realize the supreme personality of Godhead and attain liberation. He couldn't attain bhakti, but he could attain liberation. That's mentioned. You'll see it, it'll come up in the pre in the uh, sequential verses that are coming that dear Rastra wasn't able to get bhakti because he had offended the Pandavas who were Vaishnava. The one who offends in a Vaishnava can no longer get bhakti anymore. Bhakti becomes the cause of their destruction. And therefore, and then the, the seriousness of Vaishnava Aparad is very acute where one can lose all of the results of all of their pious activities by offending a Vaishnava, especially a pure Vaishnava, which the Pandavas were actually very dear to the Lord. And Arjuna was a personal associate of the Lord and a deep, deep confidential friend also. So, but he could again, he could again at least get liberation. So Vidura, being his well-wisher, is instructing him. By, you'll, you'll see that finally he accepts it. But here, we, Prabhupada wants to make a, a point that time is Krishna himself. Krishna says, Mitya, what is it? Mitya Sarva Arasya Aham. He says, I am time in the form of death. And uh, I am Kala. Another name for Krishna is Kala. He is time. So in the material world, time works in such a way as that whatever we have will be finished in due course of time. But one thing time cannot take away from us, and that is if we become Krishna conscious. And then that, that Krishna consciousness 
forces time to bring us to a higher level of existence. That means the spiritual world where there is no more birth, no more death, no more disease, and no more old age, which are just features of the material life that are built in. They cannot be, as it says here, they are invincible. So one who is actually intelligent will seriously take to Krishna consciousness and ultimately go back home, back to Godhead. That is the message that is being performed here. We find ourselves in a very awkward position, being in the material world with a material body, where Prabhupada said, make the best use of a bad bargain. Bad bargain is the material body. Make the best use of a bad bargain by engaging it in devotional service to the Lord. And one who does so, that bad bargain becomes the source of their good fortune, it takes them to the spiritual world. In other words, his body has value if it's used in Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, it's just a source of misery and ultimately a source of the, it causes one to become attached in such a way that one is again forced at the time of death to re-enter another species or another, another womb of another mother and again go through the whole cycle of birth and death again. So leaving Krishna in the spiritual world and coming here is a great punishment upon the living entity. <laughs> We're not meant to leave Krishna. <laughs> We have an eternal loving relationship with Krishna. And somehow or other, we fell from that, from grace, and now we are in this material world. But Krishna is so kind that although the material world is so full of misery, he's there for his devotee to help them overcome the misery and bring them, he'll bring them personally back home, back to his spiritual uh, place in the, in, the, in the eternal world. And that, therefore, a devotee has to always remember that the, this life in this world is temporary. And everything that I have in this world is also temporary. Friends, family members, possessions, everything else, it's all part of the temporary realm of existence. But we have something eternal, and that is our loving relationship with Krishna, wherein Prabhupada was talking about happiness. It was interesting what he said. He said, happiness in this material world is of the nature of this material world. It's temporary. So you feel happy for a while. Some experience in this world makes you happy. And then because of the time factor, it's no longer there again. It may reappear later, but it can never be consistent. Where in the spiritual world, when you're happy, you're constantly in that mood of joyfulness and happiness. It doesn't, it doesn't subside because of, because of anything. It remains eternally there. So we can't imagine what it means to be happy continuously. Of course, devotees who are on a high platform of spiritual life, who have reached um, a certain level of perfection, are always feeling happy even though they may have to undergo some physical or suffering because of the material body, it doesn't deter their Krishna consciousness and their happiness supersedes that their uh, inconvenience that they have to accept by living in this material world. So even in this material world, we can experience continual happiness if we uh, perfect our life in Krishna. And the way to do that, there is uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the formula. He put it in three points, which he emphasized as mission, but it's also the essence of the practice. And that is chant the holy names of the Lord and develop a taste for chanting, associate with and serve Vaishnavas in a way to please the Vaishnavas. And give the message of Krishna consciousness to others. These three things comprise the entire program that Lord Chaitanya came to deliver. Of course, he mentioned other things that we should do. 
also we should worship the deity for those who are in Grihasta life. That is essential because the deity is also a manifestation of the Lord's mercy for the conditioned souls so they can see the Lord and worship the Lord and treat the Lord just like a personal family member. So the deity is also very important, particularly for Grihastas. And of course, uh, going to holy places, Lord Chaitanya visited many holy places, and uh, for the purpose of serving the Vaishnavas there and hearing transcendental knowledge from the great soul. So this is um, Lord Chaitanya, and of course, yeah, yeah. And of course, hearing and reading Srimad Bhagavatam, that is what we're doing right now. So it's a very important part of Lord Chaitanya's method. Okay. Uh, I'm being distracted for a minute here. Just give me one minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. We have a, one question already from Lakshmi Patel, which I think that is. Uh, Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you very much for this nice class. Uh, yes. Uh, before I uh, just ask Lakshmi Mataji, I also request all other devotees also, if you have any questions, comments, relation, uh, you can please raise your hand or you can type in chat window. Thank you. Lakshmi Mataji, please yeah. go ahead. And turn on the cameras. Mm -hmm. and yes, and I also request every devotee, if you can please switch on your videos, that will be very uh, interactive and very useful. Hare Krishna. Lakshmi you please go ahead. Okay, so she thinks she did not mean to raise her hand. It's by mistake. So Guru Maharaj, by the time other devotees ask any questions, uh, I have one question here. You mentioned that uh, Dhritarashtra could not attain bhakti because he did lots of uh, sinful activities, particularly Vaishnava Prad. So uh, is it not possible to get bhakti in that situation? Like even he was having association of Vidura who was very great devotee and also Pandavas who were also great devotee. This statement is mentioned in the upcoming verses, you'll come across it towards the end of this chapter. But it mentions because he tried to, not only, I mean, it was a, it was a pretty serious offense against the Pandavas, tried to kill them. Out of all the Vaishnava Aparads, that's the most severe of all. And there was no mention anywhere where he tried to make amends for his uh, killing of them. We don't know about that. Now he's living at their expense. He seems to be quite oblivious to what's happening. Maybe because, partly because he's blind. He's been blind from birth. But that's mentioned. So that's the statement by Srila Prabhupada in the purport in one of the upcoming verses. But if somebody commits Vaishnava Paran, and then they go through the process of seeking forgiveness and make the proper amends, then they can be free from that. Then that doesn't apply. They can still contain 
continue in their practice of bhakti. Peter Oscar didn't, doesn't mention anything where he made amends. Thanks, Maharaj. Thank you. I have one related question, but I will uh, hold it for now. Uh, there is one question in the chat from Sonal Mataji. Uh, she is asking, Hare Krishna Maharaj, humble obeisances. Can I ask if we have old relatives in family who can see death around the corner due to aging, but is still not ready to turn to reading or praying, can we do anything to make them turn to spiritual life? Yeah, talk to him just like Vidura. Talk to Vidurastra. <laughs> Tell him straight. <laughs> You're getting old. You're about to leave your body. Don't you understand? There's another life. If you don't, you know, God is God is your eternal loving master. Now's the time. There's no more, nothing left for you in this world. Just now you have to turn to God. Speak straight. Speak, speak in a very kind and considerate way, but speak straight. You won't have to mince words when it comes to that situation. Down the straight. <laughs> it would be very nice to let them know uh, this is the time of death. Is the time, is the purpose of life, is to perfect our life that at the time of death we, we elevate ourselves to a higher position. Prabhupada would lament when he saw, especially people in Western countries, they will get old and they just sit around playing cards, some kind of deckers or chess or just waste their time just doing frivolous and children-like activities. Because that old age is a very, it's a, it's a warning that death is coming. Why is there old age? Because it's a warning. But now is the time, if you haven't got serious before, then you better do it now because old age, old age means uh, getting uh, time to getting time to lose. <laughs> it's God's mercy. This old age it helps you understand that time is short. But don't wait for all day, either. <laughs> That's not the program. So, Nil Mataji, I hope you got the answer. You are on mute. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. It will be difficult, but uh, I'll try. Thank you, Maharaj. Krishna is with you, don't worry. You can know that Krishna will help you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. It is. That's compassion. When you see a person sitting on the branch of the tree and they're sawing on the inside, and you tell them, if you keep sawing, the branch is going to break and you're going to fall. There's that story where one man is sitting and he's sawing on the inside. Another person comes along and says, if you keep, if you keep doing that, you're going to fall and fall from the tree. And, he, and the other guy who's sawing, he just, nah, yeah, he just weighs him away. And then he keeps sawing, he falls down, and he runs to the other man. Wow, how can you, know, how can you understand that? And you must be some prophet or something. So we get our information from the scriptures, from Guru, from Krishna. And that the purpose of life is to attain self-realization. 
And it can be done even within the first few moments of people that get seen in this. Mm -hmm. Number one, self, fix your, your, your computer. All you can see is the top of your head. Really well, yeah. We still can only see half of you. Move your computer screen. <laughs> Sorry, I have a um, not good sound. Well, maybe you can tell him. Tell him to yeah, then Mr. Prabhu, uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. What Maharaj is saying that if you can lower your screen, because your only uh, half face is visible. So, so not related to your sound, but just more. So if you lower your screen, you your full face will be visible. Yes, yeah, yeah. correct. Good. <laughs> Thank you. He has a nice smile. We want to see that. Okay. All right. So, anyway. Guru Maharaj, like there is no question, but uh, I have just one related question from the previous one. Um, so, in our life, we may have committed lots of uh, mistakes, uh, like kind of Vaishnava Pada, knowingly, unknowingly, uh, few which we may even not uh, understood correctly, and few maybe some knowingly, but we thought maybe it's not really Vaishnava Pada. So how to really counter like just chanting and devotional service? You can also pray that my dear Lord, my dear Lord, I know I've committed offenses unknowingly, please, if I do, please. Uh, help me to understand and please forgive me for the offenses. And there is another one, which is a more um, uh, involved solution. That is that you go to Mayapur and you go to one area of Mayapur called, it is a Kola group of the nine islands. And you go to the Ashram of David and the Pandit. And there you pray. And it says that all Vaishnava Atharads are removed at that place. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Go to Mayapur, yeah, Kovadu. Lord Chaitanya has made that one place in the world special. Mercy, where one can get free from Vaishnava, but one should not take advantage of that. One should be very careful not to commit Vaishnava. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. This is really, really helpful. Thank you. So, Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if you have any questions, comments, like it's a very nice topic in terms of birth, old age, disease. And association of devotees, everything we discussed in today's class. So please, if you have any related questions, any comments, do raise your hand. The bodies are not asking questions. Yesterday we didn't get any questions. Silpesh Prabhu, yes, please go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance and goes to Shri Prabhupada. Can I ask an unrelated question, if that's okay? Uh, well, of course. Okay. Yesterday I was in a sandwich shop, and the girl who was serving me, she's like Indian, and she herself is like pure vegetarian, but she has to handle meat. So I was asking her how she felt about that, and she goes, yeah, I didn't like it at first, but I have to do it to earn a living, and the hours suit me so I can pick up my child from school. So my question was right, what, how does that affect that person's karma? Uh, the person she's serving or herself? Herself, herself, because she can't eat and so forth, even though she's a vegetarian herself. Yeah, well, the scriptures don't, don't lie. And anyone who serves it also gets a reaction. 
So I, people think, well, I have this occupation. There's so many occupations you can get. Why take one that is causing you sinful activity? Selling liquor, selling cigarettes, selling meat, or giving these things out to others, either as a service or as an occupation, you'll get a reaction to that. God doesn't say, well, well, you got to make a living, therefore you can, you can, you can engage in a sinful life. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that anyway. Yeah, it says seven people become uh, victimized or they get a reaction for meat. Those who, those who kill the animal, those who cut it up, the butcher, those who pack it, those who sell it, those who buy it, those who serve it, those who cook it, those who eat it. <laughs> and you're also helping other people commit sinful activities by serving them. So you're not only implicating yourself, of course, they'll do it anyway. Why should you be the person to get the reaction? Prabhupada says, when one is a devotee and they fall down, if they fall down to meat eating, that is the most abominable of the, all of the four sinful activities. This is sex, intoxication, meat eating, and gambling. Meat eating is the most abominable. And I said to the lady, I said, uh, pray to Krishna to find you something better. Is that okay to say to somebody? Yeah, good. I mean, I, I face this situation with disciples too. You get situations where a mother, she's a vegetarian, she's a devotee, but she has family members, either a husband or children that want me. So what do you do in that case? So the situation I had to face with one of my disciples, I just told her, if they want me, let them get them themselves. Don't be, don't you provide it for them. At first she couldn't understand that, but then, because uh, that'll, that'll, that'll send a message that, hey, if you want, this that this this is not bad. This is not good. It's simple. If you contribute to that, then you're you're not you're not helping them understand how simple it is to eat it. So. so the best thing is to do is to pull back immediately and then look for a job. And people wonder why they have problems in life. They can't understand that because they're getting re reactions from their simple activity. Thank you, Marge. That's a really helpful question. Thank you. Meat is, an unhealth is, un is unhealthy anyway. <laughs> been proven very unhealthy. Yeah, so everyone is looking for some compromise. They want to be Krishna conscious or God conscious, but at the same time they still want something in the material world that goes against the principles of bhakti. And they think just because I want it, it's okay because I'm a devotee. It's not okay. <laughs> character is the, is the principle that makes up a devotee. What is your character? 
your activities are secondary to your character. And your character, your activities will help build your character for sure. But if you're still, you know, acting in a way that is uh, spoiling your character, in other words, things that are contrary to the mode of goodness, things that are in the mode of ignorance or passion, then how is how is it possible you then make steady progress in devotional service? But we should not get discouraged. We should not, because we have these attachments, we should not be discouraged. We should fight against them. We should pray to Krishna to help us. We should get support and encouragement from people who are, who are well-wishers. It's not like we have to fight these things alone. That's why we have the association of others, devotees, Friends, well wishers. Here's where we get our strength. So you are actually telling her, you know, mood of a well wisher. Yeah, get another job. <laughs> Any other questions? We don't have any questions, Maharaj, on the chat or? Okay, so we so can do, do, do you have any last question? Any? Looks like no, Maharaj, maybe I you want to. Hi, Dev. Thank you very much for your lecture. And I would just like to join, uh, to, to put uh, an experience I had because of the of the eating. I about five years ago I was going into a, an oldies home for living and then they they had no vegetarian but they said they would cook without meat. And then I started there and then I saw Gordev about maybe two or three weeks after and he looked at me and he said, You immediately go get out, get out there. You cannot stay there and live there because they cook with meat and they eat meat. And then I said, but I am not, I'm not taking. He said, never mind not taking, it's the same pan, it's cooked in, and you will get results from that and if, if you, will, you will fall down and you will get back. And then I realized really, as soon as you do not properly refrain, it's, 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 it's getting bad. Because you know that they say, oh, we are cooking without me. But then here they have onions, and here they have this, and here they have that. And then finally you are all mixed up. So I had to quit. And he said, quit that place, and you will find that thing. So I did, and it's the happiest moment. I stopped there, and I got the best. Because he said, you better go to India. It's the best to do, and not stay here and lose time. You go to India, and then it's OK. And that was for it. I'm happy with in India now five years without e without eating meat <laughs> and having dasha here every day. And it's a good life. It's the best life you can have. Thank you, Maharaj, for sending me to India. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you for accepting. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Mataji. It's like nice message for all the generations also, for all of us also. Yes, there is one good place waiting for us if you want, which is India. Right. <laughs> Thank you. So, Maharaj, you mentioned there is one announcement to be made today. Yeah, the announcement is very streamlined. It's for only for devotees in the UK. I think we got a couple of devotees in the line right from the UK. Yes. Shilpa, I don't know, maybe. 
I shall pass you. So um, there is a program in the UK that they are putting books, classified books in prisons, uh, nursing homes, schools, hospitals, and various other institutions. It's a big program. They put 25,000 books in last year. They're going to be. So um, I was talking to the leader of the program. Her name is Radha Dasi. She stays in the UK. And um, she's asking, it's such a big project that they need some two things they, they're asking for. One is that they're starting a program to teach some of these people Krishna consciousness through Shastric programs. And she was asking me, do I know anyone in the UK who's a devotee that would be willing to teach in any one of these uh, institutions? And the second thing is that if one wants to volunteer to help her in the program of organizing and distributing books, into these institutions, which is a little harder work. You know, it means packaging books, delivering books, in some cases shipping books, taking, uh, you, know, you know, so that, that's more of a legwork type job. And the other one is the teachers. So anybody from the UK who wants to help with this program, it's really an inspiring program. The totals for books are phenomenal. And they're all pro, she distributes only pro books. Uh, so we, anybody in the UK, you can spread the word to other devotees who may be interested to uh, get involved with this program. And, and any information you need, I can give it to you, you know, as far as the contact and. Yes, Mother, sure, I will do. And uh, if you have any, like, like maybe Mataji number, then I can speak to her and I can understand more details in terms of more logistics, timelines, and other things. And then yeah, I can, I can come to her, 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 uh, her uh, email. Sure, sure. Yeah. Mataji. I spoke with her on Zoom call for 40 minutes yesterday, and she was filling me in and all the details. <laughs> So it's a very powerful program that's it's getting the Prabhupada's books into places that would never go. <laughs> and she's also asking for anyone who can teach. And the teaching program is still in the process of development. Once they put together the courses, they're, they're going to start um, beginning to present these courses in certain places. And she's also looking for teachers who can teach Krishna consciousness. That means you have to have some working knowledge of the philosophy. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be very difficult teaching because it's basic stuff. This, these are all new people. Brand new. Uh, Maharaj, uh, I ask, does this mean actually going into the prison itself to? Yeah, wherever wherever these people are, you have to go to them. Prisons, nursing homes, schools, the hospitals. And I think she's focusing on prisons mostly right now for the first, first step. <laughs> And that means there will have to be a clearance. Mm -hmm. So she can do all the work for the clearance. All you have to do is apply. And it, it would be good training for devotees because if they can start speaking the philosophy, that will increase their Krishna consciousness automatically. Mm -hmm. Sure, yes, my 
Okay, so I have a appointment right at the hour, so it's right there now. So thank you very much for all the devotees to join today's session. Uh, thank you, Maharaj, for joining. Shila Prabhupad ki jai. Anand Koti Vaishnav Brind ki jai. Thank you so much.